all right guys welcome back to the algs channel hope you guys are all doing well and having a great day so far i started the video off looking this way and i forgot that i've got a completely different setup now i got a brand new pc rearranged my camera and everything and uh, don't ask me why you know we start off with twitter white we go over to twitter dark and somewhere in the middle of this video but hope you guys like i said are enjoying the day so far we've got a lot to discuss with challenger circuit we've got a lot to discuss with you know the tier two scene of apex the tier one scene of apex some drama that's going on roster updates that are going on as well so make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel if you guys want to stay up to date all things apex legends esports related without further ado let's go ahead and dive right into this so the first thing i wanted to make mention of here this was a controversial post to say the least that tech put out apparently dick Sardo conducted a study analyzing data from the game's ranked mode and found that controller players had a higher win rate and were overrepresented in high ranks overrepresented overrepresented in high ranks compared to mouse and keyboard players specifically the study found that when a win rate for controller players in diamond lobbies was 40.1 percent while the win rate for mouse and keyboard players was only 31.6 percent this suggests that aim assist is providing controller players with a significant advantage in winning games obviously it goes on to you know give more detailed analytics but the short story is that it made a lot of people upset right you know you go into the comments and you know average mouse and keyboard player complaining about aim assist and then you know no that's what the age of the console player masters are and it goes back and forth every which way and so you know I, it's a never-ending debate regardless i just thought it was funny people also got mad because apparently all the you know numbers combined don't equal 100 percent so it was a little weird to say the least, but thought I would mention it. It was worth definitely noting. Also wanted to mention this. This is actually coming from Apex Legends Esports. Let me know. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The camera angle is not changing because this is kind of the way I have it set up right now for streams and stuff. Uh, but I am interested to know what you guys do think. I hope you guys do like it. I did change the ALGS little logo down here as well. But uh, regardless, that's neither here nor there. Apex Legends Esports have also put out an update. So if you guys like to watch the Pro League, which I know you do, you may have known that there's some issues. We've been discussing it here on the channel that they have had issues with the servers crashing. They've had issues with the multicast and, uh, you know, the command center on Twitch not working appropriately. They put out this tweet yesterday and said, we have pinpointed the issues that caused our servers to crash during Pro League last week. As a countermeasure, we deployed minor tweaks to the server along with the decision to disable multiview until we can assure the issues impacting our server stability have been completely resolved we intend to bring back a multiview experience and we're working on a solution to address this we hope we have an update for you soon but until then we will see you on sunday for our regular scheduled programming obviously a lot of teams are happy about this singularity putting out a big w Jim putting out a big w and many people are pretty happy to see but there are some people that uh, you know are saying like rogue you should pause the pro league until you fix the incredibly worsening audio issues in the game and that could also be followed up by jit saying although this was a w what about the silent weapon audio and that has been happening to me as well lately i'll be getting shot in the back by a vault and have no i'm just like seeing the damage on my screen but i'm not hearing where i'm getting shot from or what's going on so definitely interesting stuff to say the least and it does seem to be confirmed that multi-view uh could be uh crashing the servers because if you guys are not aware a lot of pros have also said in the past that they believe that the uh ridiculous amount of observers in the game is what's like really affecting the servers as well because i don't know how algs does it i mean maybe we can do it somewhere and i'm just not aware but it only allows us to have like five, you know, observers in a match for whatever reason in, in the private lobbies. And even when you have like the creator code lobbies, you can still only have like five observers. But for the ALGS, they have like 30 plus server, I mean, observers. So they've got 60 players competing in the match, like, you know, another 30 or 40 observing the match. So you've got almost a, over 100 people or so in these lobbies. I can understand why maybe some of this stuff not going as smoothly as they would like for it to do also wanted to make mention of this so you guys know the infamous battle between igls of sweet dreams and how it continues with the clowning again and i had to give some appreciation for nrg because i thought this was so funny sweet dreams basically retweeted imperial house tweet from february the 8th where imperial house said i got to play test season 16 and let me tell you tsm is winning again and <laughs> sweet dreams obviously after tsm's not been playing good decided to say no cap and it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, it ended there. It continued on. Sweet Dreams also said in response to Nasky, I love the current meta. No boring Horizon ult 
insta wipe a team teams with the best macro plus gunfight slash synergy seem to win the games it's absolutely perfect this is my season but remove the seer ult plus catalyst wall interaction because obviously that's terrible the sweet dreams continues on clowning house saying yeah really bad teams are struggling right now and good teams are doing good insinuating that tsm is a bad team and that's why they're doing really bad as well and people love this uh draw i guess not we don't want to say drama but more so of like the the beef that they have the uh the banner that they have obviously we know we saw the infamous interview over algs we know these guys can somewhat to a degree get along but they like to clown each other they're arch arch nemesis they're rivals and i think this is what makes great uh storylines for apex esports as well but although people were clowning on imperial how for that a lot of people were giving how some credit as well because this is what how is doing as an individual as a player deciding to uh play with bbb in scrims so even with the t uh, the contest going on with bbb he still decides to sub in for scrims and follows zach's instructions and calls and doesn't contest and also after getting wiped and this is when most coaches step in do their talks and stuff he doesn't speak unless asked because enoch is on trial for coaching and probably didn't want to interfere with that p.s i love the comms and the synergy not going to lie so we know how obviously he's, he's very vocal he likes to talk he likes to complain or he likes to say this is your fault or we should have done this or it was my fault i should have done this I really like that how can be a player who respects the esports uh you know of apex entirely to go into an environment like this with a team he's competing against and try to help uh i guess with some you know situations like this nonetheless good stuff that i really like uh i really like that although how can get out of hand sometimes with his emotions i do think that a lot of the time it's probably necessary for his team's sake and i also just like that he's like a good i think he's a good poster boy for apex esports i really do i think that he's like showing the passion is there the love for the game is there the uh you know the desire to compete is there the desire to compete for something other than just the money obviously but also like you know the bragging rights and wanting to you know go tsm versus nrg and howl versus sweet dreams like he lives for those storylines as well and that's why i also like sweet dreams i think they're doing a good job at promoting the apex esports industry entirely honestly probably a little bit better than ea themselves are also wanted to mention this over from the emea scene you guys know this squad and probably love this squad as they did very well uh, aura aura i can't remember how to pronounce it but you guys probably know this individual named sunset and they have decided to welcome him to the family as one of their newest players so what's crazy is you didn't even see this roster play at the split one playoffs which is unfortunate because they actually placed first in the emea pro league for split one and we're going to talk about that so they actually put out this tweet saying today we'd like to announce our replacement in our apex legends roster lineup unfortunately i think it's Malawan I'm not sure I'm the worst with names especially with other you know leagues besides the North American I'm trying to learn them more and more each and every day so give me a break please they said we're grateful to him for the time that we spent together and our new player on the team will be announced shortly let's take, take a look at this Nasky came to the defense very quickly and said why the f would a star player be kicked because of a few bad games this is unbelievable as well and everybody's like yeah i'm kind of confused as to what's going on and then shortly after that's when they obviously announced that sunset would be their new player and obviously this guy's good as well but when you look at this it's insane that they finished first place split one split one playoffs they didn't even get to play at the split one play i'm sorry they they, they placed first in split one pro league they didn't even get to play in split one playoffs because of the lack of visa issues and uh, i think a lot of like the travel stuff they weren't able to get through as uh as they obviously wanted to and we saw this exact same story with fire beavers fire beavers going through the same thing fire beavers an insane team but unfortunately did not get their visas in time and they didn't get to go to the land so it's weird that they're making roster changes after they did so well last split and didn't even get a chance to shine at the split one playoffs that really really sucks and not only is it a rob out of like obviously you know the in entertainment and being able to make a name for yourself but it's very obvious that if those guys would have been able to just play and show up they would have probably at least got a nice top 10, which is in turn some decent money for them as well. So I just really hate that it didn't work out that way. But nonetheless, that is a roster change that's happening over in the MEA scene that you guys want to be aware of as well. Also wanted to mention this just as we close the video out. Some nice little tier two news as well. So Timmy was actually running some scrims, it seems. And this guy who people are just now beginning to learn about, he seems to be a very well-known player in the tier two league but obviously tier two a lot of times don't get the views they don't get the recognition that they need so you love to see stories like this where these guys are improving their reputation each and every day so this guy apparently had dominated in these scrims and he began to get some uh you know love over on the twitch stream as well absolutely huge stream i won timmy scrims and got blessed by the goat shuby with a huge raid 
and also you guys can see most damage and most kills in Timmy scrims he he so this guy is like popping off I mean he's an absolutely certified beast he's insane he was doing a lot of damage doing a lot getting a lot of kills and uh showing why I guess some of these tier two guys definitely need to be represented a little bit more and uh, I'm really happy about this because I feel like apex honestly is a game where the challenger circuit to a degree still means something the entirety of apex esports is a little weird because like you look at franchise league like valorant and and obviously call of duty those leagues like mean i would say a lot but the problem with those leagues is they they kind of really like suppress the challenger scene and they make it to where the semi-pro scene is not as uh I guess viable to stick around but in apex like it's a big deal when you do something in challengers like when if you win a challengers event in, in call of duty it's like yeah okay but you're not pro but when you win something in challengers it's like oh this guy really is you know he's doing some great stuff because i think with apex the game's like competition is so spread out and you've got a lot of good players over in challengers a lot of good players in pro league and i think a lot of these challengers teams could probably compete in pro league if we're being honest and so We'll see how it all goes down and how obviously Apex Esports continues to grow. But I really like to see some new love for the tier two guys as well. And we'll see if they can obviously continuously bounce back after all of these challenger events. There's another one going on today, although I did schedule my thousand dollar tournament finals as well today. But I think it should end in appropriate time before the, or right after the challenger circuit ends. So challenger circuit should in theory end if you guys are going to want to watch my thousand dollar finals as well on my main channel at 7 p.m. Eastern. Let me know what you guys think about all the topics down in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video if you guys did enjoy and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to stay up to date all things Apex Legends esports related. Until the next time, I'll see you later, Gators.